the sundown, it's on you. <laughs> but even in the agricultural system at that time, ancient Israel, there was two sets of rains. In between was the dry season. Mm -hmm. The first rain was the former rain. Mm -hmm. That's when the seed is able to be put in the ground. Mm -hmm. That's when the ground is receptive to what's planted. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. Amen? Y'all, yeah, yeah, I'm talking in parallels. Yeah. It's good. You know, even between the former and the latter rain, you, I taught this house on the three feasts. Mm -hmm. And the feasts encapsulate the former and the latter rains, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So those are different things that go through. So the former rain is making sure that the soil is sensitive enough mm -hmm. to receive the seed. Mm -hmm. And you know what? No plowing. Yep. Oh, wow. right. No effort. Mm -hmm. No work. Mm -hmm. It is work, but it's first the rains, mm -hmm. then the plowing. Mm -hmm. Not the plowing, then the rains. Because we're trying to break up follow ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the so, but this is talking about not only it doesn't even mention the former rain. It's, men, it's mentioning the latter rain. Mm -hmm. The former rain was the introduction. Mm -hmm. That was the foundational principles. That's the basic things. That's the Passover, the death, burial, resurrection. But then you go over to, to the latter rain. The latter rain, if you can do your own study, was the rain of maturity. <laughs> so this is saying, because we have a horse forehead or our thinking is incorrect, we're going to lack maturity. The reason why the church is not mature, because the church still has a horse forehead. Our thinking. We have an allegiance. That's contrary to covenant. We like breaking. Oh, y'all know I'm talking. Mm -hmm. We like to go outside of the boundaries that's established in the word. Go ahead. And God desires to bring us to a point where there is level of virtuosity in us. There's a level of singleness and, yeah. and, and commitment yeah. to come back to us. You know the words that make you uncomfortable? Like order, structure, alignment. Because yeah. the horse forehead don't like all that. Government? What? I don't want no government. I'm going to go to the pastor's church. Because you go to apostles and prophets, those words are mainstay. Yes. Those are not just terms tossed around like confetti. That, that's palpable Conjectures of the heart. You cannot be apostolic or prophetic without those things. And you can't be a church that confesses such without that being implemented into your life. So we have high levels. We got the vernacular. We got the vocabulary. We got the colloquial terms. We got the allegories and the, and the different mysteries available to us, but yet the fruit of those concepts are not prevalent in us. God has a goal for us, folks. Yes. Yes. You think I'm at you. I'm not at you. God is after you. I want this thing to be wrapped up. I want us to come to a point where his headship is preeminent. Not his government. I know his and government are kind of, you know, in parallel, but not quite. Because some of that rests on the, 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 the works of men's hands. I'm talking about headship. Where he's head. For us, without us. Remember, the son of man don't have a place to lay his head. Luke, six and two, uh, Luke 9 and six, uh, 62, somewhere over there. He said, foxes have holes. Birds have nests. Why did he say that? Because those are the places where you reproduce. 
You say, I want to reproduce my head. I want to reproduce my order, my government, and the people. But there's no reproduction because we have a horse forehead. We, oh, let me hurry up and get done with this teaching. Yeah, okay, thank you, baby. Well, she said it. I'm knowing good now. Go to Proverbs 12. Oh, I'm all ready now. She gave me, I see, hey, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Proverbs 12 and 4, let's go there. I, I don't know about you guys, but even that last part of Jeremiah 3 says, you refuse to be ashamed. Some church don't, some folks, you can bring them, you can counsel them, talk to them, text them, email them, inbox them, <laughs> and they're still not ashamed. And we still repeat offenders. We're still redundant, which is a sign of a lack of maturity. <laughs> to continue to do something, expecting different results, they said it's insanity. Yes, sir. We got to change. And you cannot change. You can't transition until you change mentally. Amen. As a man think is what? So we are, our lives are a product of how we feel about ourselves and what we think about ourselves. Yep. Trust me. <laughs> you get a healthy mind, you get a healthy life. Amen. Proverbs 12 and 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh the shame is a rottenness in his bones. Hello, church. How are we supposed to be a virtuous woman? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Don't we have one husband? Yes. <laughs> We're not married to him. We're not, look, look, guys. There's some theological circles that say we, we're going to be married to him after we get raptured out of the earth. We're going to spend seven immaculate years with him with that long table with them cold food items on there. <laughs> Can you imagine being at that table? That table has to be long, millions and millions of people. Am I right? Yes. I mean, that table, I mean, I'll be like, Herbs the biscuit. Herbs the biscuits. <laughs> I'm just saying, by the time it gets to me, the biscuits going to be cold because they got to go through everybody to get to me. I don't know. It's just some of the stuff that we've accumulated and we've carnalized spiritual truths. I'm not trying to in the next life. I'm his bride now. I'm a virtuous woman now. I'm in covenant with him now. Because if I'm not in covenant with him now, anything I produce is a bastard. Yes. 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 If the marriage union didn't take place, and I believe it did, I taught this house about the statement. A man should do what? Leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Jesus did it. He left his father, came down. Am I right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he cleaved unto us. That's why he said, forgive them. So he cleaved to us. In fact, he got pierced in his side. Blood and water came out of his side. What the Adam? Eve brought out of Adam's side. When he was suspended, he was cleaving. He was leaving. He, that's why he said, he said, Father, why that thou hast forsaken me? So he was cleaving to his bride on the cross. And that blood and water burnt us. The consummation, the coronation was in our room. When we got filled with the Holy Ghost. That was the earnest of what God wanted to do for us. And not just for, but in us. You understand? We are a virtuous woman. And how we respond mentally. The crown of her husband. The crown. The regality, the authority, the anointing. It's going to come through the church. It's going to come through us. The affirmation of him is going to come through us. Remember Proverbs 31 said that uh, because of her activity being virtuous, it said her husband should be known where? In the gates. So when we don't have a horse forehead, when we're submitted to God, when we're walking circumspectly, when we're walking with faultless and blameless, guess what? Our husband is known in the gates. The reason why he's not known in our city, the reason why he's not known in your life and in your family, all those gates in our church is because he, we're not submitted to him. We got a horse for him. I'm telling you, when they see us, they should see him. Amen? When God joined together, let no man put asunder. But if they put asunder because we got a horse for him. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the bridegroom, I'm a voice of the bridegroom.
right. Mm -hmm. Every apostolic prophetic, every five more minutes we go, that's all we do. We try to tell you, you know what? Be reconciled. Be changed. You don't have to think from that dimension. That's beneath you. You don't have to operate like that. Be virtuous. Be upstanding. Be respectable. Act accordingly. You don't have to have side chicks or side men or, or sugar daddies. Amen. Amen. I know this ain't gonna go over well. I was supposed to say a couple of weeks ago I was excited, the rest of them just folded like this. <laughs> this is the backbone of your sanctity. Yeah. If your room is gonna remain to have a chastity where his, the incorruptible seed can be lodged in there so you can replicate and produce his nature in the earth, yeah. these are some of the buzzwords. It's one on one. This is salvation one on one, baby. Yeah. Yes. We had uh, so there's a level of uh, virtuosity that must come to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We wait to grow up, but we can't grow up until we start changing some of our con concepts and mm -hmm. the things that uh, we've created for ourselves. Because we've become a costless religion, a non-sacrificial religion, a convenient religion. Although salvation is free, it will cost you something. It may cost you some relationship. It may cost you some friends. It may cost you some comfort zones, some connections, some commitments. He may want to realign you. So he can expose you to one husband. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. I'm almost done. A whore's forehead. I want the ladder right. 